Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage and the Datsun 120Y. This video was supposed to be a shopping list, finding out what I need to buy to make this car ready for the road. It shouldn't be much, but it's not going to be this time around. Because as you can see, I have had an extremely hard time getting the car into the garage because it can fire up, but it doesn't want to accept any kind of throttle. It just dies instantly if I pull out the choke, it dies. It just, it, it can stay at idle and it can drive at idle, but if it needs to go over a bump like my lift, then it will just cut out because it doesn't have enough power to go over stuff like that in, at idle. So I need to fix that. So what I'm going to do today, because I expect it to be a carb issue, it could also be ignition, we'll see. But I think it's the carb. I think it's a mix of old fuel and the carb. So I'm going to take the carb off and give it a bath in my ultrasonic cleaner, empty out the tank, put in fresh fuel, and then try and see if that works. So with the carb now off the Datsun, let's take a look at this. Yeah, I broke this gasket. I need to make another one. But take a look at the size <laughs> of the inlet in that manifold. It's amazingly small. And that could maybe explain the fact that I've been told that this car should be able to get a, around 20 kilometers out of one liter of fuel under perfect circumstances, but still under normal circumstances, it should be able to give around 16 or 17 kilometers per liter, which is really impressive considering it's a car from the 70s. That, <laughs> and that's really nice. But with an inlet like that, it won't be consuming a lot of fuel, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, it's actually cute. So let's go ahead and uh, disassemble as much as possible on this so that we can throw it into the, to the cleaner. One thing I noticed is that the choke seems to be rather stuck actually. You can move it but just barely. So I don't think the choke mechanism is, is doing what it is supposed to, to be doing, that's for sure. That explains, that could explain why the car just dies instantly when I pull out the choke, because it might give a little bit more fuel maybe. I don't know exactly how the choke is working, but it's not choking the, uh, the air supply. And I had a feeling that the car was getting way too much air and not enough fuel. And uh, I can also see down in the car that it's skunked up. And uh, it's got a lot of old fuel that needs to come out. And a lot of stuff is most likely gummed up from that. And already now I can see <laughs> that this carb is full of crap. So I'm really surprised that it even ran. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the uh, cleaner now. 
I could take it more apart, but I would like to give it a bath and then take it out and, and clean the jets and all that. And then I'm going to give it 20 minutes and then we're going to see how it looks and then take it more apart and give it some more after that. But uh, let's start. This is not bad, still not perfect. We have some crab in here, but it's really rather nice. I'm gonna agitate it a bit more and then give it one more go. So I found a diagram over the carp. It's not ex exactly the same linkage system uh, there is on this one, but it seems to be the same main carp, so I can use it to reassemble. And I have actually taken out all the jets and uh, made a little drawing <laughs> of the carp just to keep everything in order so I can put them back the same way. Then, and that's the reason why I found the diagram, these two fell out of the carp, so I had to figure out where they go, but I now know. Just have to not lose that ball because that would be a bit bad. So right now I'm just checking all passages. Um, and I do that with brake cleaner and just try to squirt through them. And I've checked everything and all of them are free, except this one right there, the small one. And actually I tried to take it out of this screw but I broke it slightly, it's completely stuck. I'm not gonna be able to take it out, but it doesn't really matter. But there is no passageway through this at the moment. This is connected to this, that is connected, that is um, connected to the float ball. And then by this piston, it makes pressure into that and into that little passageway right there when you accelerate. So this is, I'm pretty sure of, is the acceleration or enrichment device on this one, which really makes sense that it doesn't work because when I give it a bit of throttle, because air is moving faster than the fuel, it will get way too much air into it and then it will just choke out and, and die. Therefore, it enriches the mixture uh, shortly when you, when you floor it, you just compensate for that. And that really makes sense on the, uh, on the way this car was uh, behaving, because if I could get it over that flat spot, and then it drove pretty fine actually, but giving the throttle from idle and up was pretty much impossible. So this makes sense. I just have to, uh, to clear out that blockage. And then I think we will be good to go. Of course, one thing, by the way, that I learned from using the Sonic Cleaner last time on the Princess, is that everything gets really clean. Take a look at this. As far as I know, this is the original carp from the 70s, and this looks brand new after that uh, cleaning. Uh, some of it is not that good, but uh, in general, it's really looking nice. But everything gets super uh, degreased and clean. That means that these axles in here are completely dry now. So they, they will get stuck rather quickly. So I need to lubricate all the moving parts 
And I think I will also give it a light spray of WD-40 everywhere just to keep the uh, aluminum from corroding. So, uh, yeah. But firstly, need to fix that block blockage. There we go. Gotta say, I'm slightly worried that I did not just unclog it, but I actually enlarged it. But we'll see. <laughs> so I think I can start reassembling the card now because I know everything is not clogged anymore. Oh, before putting that in, I'm just gonna make a template for the uh, for the new gasket that I need to make. Remember this from school? Something I learned in school that I can actually use. That's nice. This is just going to be a template that I then have to cut out and transfer to a piece of gasket paper. You want to hear what I just did? <laughs> I just wanted to clean out the float ball. There was some crap down there, so I, so I sprayed some brake cleaner in, and then I just wanted to empty it out. And then, um, and then uh, I remembered that little metal ball. <laughs> I dropped the metal ball on the floor. <laughs> I can't believe my own luck. This is not supposed to be possible to find on a concrete floor like this, but right here, I found it. Let's remember not to do that again. So I cut the new gasket. That should work. It's not perfect, but it should work. And now I think we can reassemble the top cover on this one. I also have cleaned the uh, the inlet valve. Fit everything back together like that. And then it's just a matter of remembering how everything fits back together, which can be slightly difficult. I'm going to grease up all the pivoting points. Yeah, that's more like it. it. Seems rather fine now. This is the choke mechanism and when I pull it, it should close that. It didn't do that before. Let's try. Oh yeah, smooth. So this seems to work. And I'm also pretty sure that the acceleration pump will now Squirt fuel in, maybe a little bit too much, but we'll see about that. I just love the detail with the with the little window here. I saw that for the first time on my Neva, and now I also see it on this one, and I think it's a great detail. Of course, it's a possibility of a leak, but still, it's just so nice to see if you actually have fuel in your carb for really easy troubleshooting on the on the fly and then a piece of fresh fuel line now i'm just going to cut a gasket for the bottom end because i forgot that and then put it all back to the car and then take you back when i have done that and then it's time to see if this makes any kind of difference which i'm pretty sure it's going to do and i also did a bit of cleaning down here before putting on the carb just to because it's possible to, to reach right now. So 
I'll be back in a second. There we go. The car is back on the engine. The airbox is back on. The old fuel is completely drained. I'm gonna fill in some fresh fuel and then we're gonna try to crank it. So let's see, choke out. And I don't suspect it to fire up instantly because it needs to pressure, because it needs to pull the fuel from the rear all the way through the filter and through the pump and into the cap before anything will happen. So it will take a while, of course. Let's try. And let's give it a little break. I just checked there's fuel in the cap now because I can see it through the, the glass eye. So it should fire up now, hopefully. The guy I bought it from told me that he thought that it was ignition related and the ignition components are really worn. So uh, that could be the case, but the cap was really dirty as well. Okay, so the cab is really worn, but I think it should work still. It is in ignition right now. When I open and close these, it should spark, but it isn't. So we are having some issue right there. So I cleaned up the points and wiggled with the connections. Let's try again. Oh yeah. Now it's sparking, so let's try again. You might notice a new battery once again, because this is the land of old, broken, worn out batteries. So I have to change them out. <laughs> this one is new though. So this one should last for a long time. Okay, so this is a lot better now. So this, this has really helped, but still we have a huge issue with the ignition system because it's extremely difficult to get going. But now we actually can rev it. Almost perfectly. some issues but this will be drivable now so now the car is clean and the fuel tank is clean that's a good thing but I don't think it's the main problem for this car at the moment because it's really hard to start but now I can actually rev it once it gets going but it's still the spark is really weak and uh, the entire ignition system needs an overhaul because the cab is completely worn out. The point seems worn out, but I think it would be nice to get some new com ignition components for this car. But uh, at least I can now drive it in and out of the garage without having to push it because now I can rev it. So that's nice. If you like my videos, then please consider supporting me on Patreon because that will make it possible for me to continue on making these videos and I really enjoy it. So that would be cool. And anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.